In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator to create a cereal box logo graphic similar to what you see on the Fruit Loops box here. We'll be using the text tool as well as some shape tools to create our image. Once the design is complete, we'll place the image into another Illustrator file where we can continue to work on our overall image. To begin with, let's take a look at the template that's been provided for the project, which includes the front panel. We don't know how big this one is until we check it out, so we choose View and we're going to choose Rulers show rulers and this will now show us the ruler along the top. This indicates that the image is about seven and five eighths wide, seven and seven and a half inches wide roughly. So we're going to make an image that is just a little bit smaller than that. So if we zoom in on this and we can get a better handle on how big that should be, we can see that we want to work with an image that's about six and a half to seven inches wide by about two to three inches tall. So we'll now choose file, new, and create an image in CMYK high definition 300 pixels per inch at let's go with 7 inches by 3 inches and that'll work pretty good that'll give us some breathing room, room along the edges of our shape if I hit tab by the way I can turn on or off my toolbox and the associated panels our first tool we're going to use today is the pen tool once I've got the tool I'm going to shut those panels off so I can work full size and if I click and then click and drag I create a line something like this I want my image, my, my logo graphic to swoop up and to the right. So I'm going to actually make two of these. So I'm going to take this and Alt, Shift, drag it to the left, or to straight down. I'm going to stretch that out a bit more. Now using the Type tool, I'm going to click right on that path. And what it's going to let me do now is typing on the path, which will follow the curve. I'm going to call my sealer serial Baylor Crunch. So I'm going to put Baylor on one line and Crunch on the next. I probably want to capitalize the first letter. And now I get to choose a font. So if I go to the Type menu and choose Font, it shows me the samples of each of the types that I could use. I'm going to go with Hobo Standard Medium for this one. And I now want to crank up the size. If you don't see these options in uh, for, for the size of your type here, you can always click on Character and work with the sizes in this list here. Now this list also lets me adjust other aspects of the lettering, including the spacing and the scaling of the images. So this one here lets me choose the spacing. I don't want to choose minus, I want to actually make it bigger spacing. And my goal is to create easy to read, easy to remember type graphics. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit wider. And it makes it a bit more interesting. Relatively anyways. And I'm going to adjust the position of that with the arrow tool. I want to fit it inside my my area with room to spare. But this one didn't fit quite as well so I need to take the points of the original path and stretch it out a little bit more to make it fit. The letter H still needs to show up and what I want to do is actually select that point and move the entire point. Now that the whole word is in there I can move this over, I can rotate a little bit and now I've got pretty much what I was going for. Okay, so there's that part of the image. At this point, the text is still text. That is, the computer recognizes it a bunch of letters and can be edited in terms of its letters. If I like the way it looks at this point, what I'm going to want to do is turn it into a bunch of shapes. At this point, we want to take a look at what's in the Layers panel and how each of the pieces in our composition relates to what we see in the Layers panel. Sometimes it's a good idea to duplicate things in order to make sure that we can always back up to a previous step. So what I'll do is I'll take those two pieces and I can choose the menu of the layers panel and choose duplicate selection. So now I've got backups which I'm just going to lock and hide in case things go bad for me later on. Now as I said I'm going to turn these into shapes. Now the difference between shapes and letters is that shapes are more editable. I can change the shape and I can adjust other characteristics of them. So I'm going to take these two pieces of letters, select them with my arrow, and choose Type, Create Outlines. This will enable me to uh, change the stroke on the outside and the fill and a number of other characteristics as, other, as well as develop other graphic options. To begin with, I'll select the two pieces, which I've changed into a shape already, and choose Edit, Copy, and then Edit, paste and back. Again, I want to pay attention to my layers panel. The two pasted pieces are now selected 
and they're behind the front pieces. So let's lock the pieces we're not using so we can pay close attention to those parts there. Let's go to my color choices and switch the fill and the stroke. So this is now an outline shape, which we can't really see. So let's shut those two front ones off. So these are now outlined. And I'm going to want to change the stroke on this, which is the line around the outside of the shape. Okay, so you can see here that the line, the, 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 the stroke color is centered on my outline. If I click on the stroke choice here, I can now put those on the inside or the outside. Well, you're going to use the outside because we want to make a bold shape around the outside of our letters. We're also going to want to change the color of this. So what we'll do is we'll change this to red using the swatch here. And I can do the same thing, by the way, right down here. This allows me to choose a more specific color. So let's go back to my layers panel, turn on the outline shapes here, lock the stroke, and now I want to work on the fill. Red and yellow are very common colors to use in foods. So I'm going to choose a yellow shade. And using my arrow keys, I'm just going to move those a little bit. And perhaps I'll make the fill the same color as well. So I'll have a nice depthy image. Okay, so that's got more depth to it than it did previously. Now if I take those pieces in the back and duplicate them again, and again, it's easier to select if I just lock everything else. So I've got the ones behind selected. And I'm going to choose Edit. That is edit copy, not edit cut. And edit paste in back one more time. So let's take this one and let's make the stroke on this one black and the fill black. And let's crank up the stroke on that one as well. So now we have what's going to appear to be a shadow behind. Okay, now I've got it moved up. And there I have it. Now I'm going to save it. And I'll save as. I'm going to put this in a folder where I can find it. Here's my box demos folder. I'm going to make a folder called and I'm going to save that. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to open this up. Open up my uh, my front panel image and I'm going to want to make sure I've got a place to put this. Now the first layer you see here is primarily for um, guidance so you know where to put things. So if I double click on this you'll see that it says print or not print. I can uncheck print so I can leave that stuff in place. I want to make a new layer for logos. And in this new layer, I'm going to choose File and Place. And here's my Crunch logo. And I can place it. Now, as you can see, it appears to be roughly the right size to put in the middle of my, my cereal box. Again, the stuff we see behind there, the black areas and the red text, is not going to appear in my final image. So I'm just going to put that there. Now I'm also going to bring in my corporate logo, which my team designed with me. It's called Corporate Logo. And there it is. Now if I'm happy with this, that now this one, if I like the way it looks, if I'm happy with everything, that's good. But now if I don't like something, let's say I want to add one more level of change to my Baylor Crunch logo. Let's just add one more shadow. So I'm going to go to my top layer. I'm going to lock everything else. And I'm going to add a shadow to these two pieces. So edit. I just have to select them here. Edit, copy, and edit, paste and back. So now I've got extra pieces behind them. And I'm just going to move these slightly down. And I want these to be sort of a shade of gray. And I'm going to make these slightly transparent by drink, bringing my opacity slightly down. Okay, so that's a nice nice depth image. I'm going to choose File, Save, and when I go back to my other image, I might get a dialog box that suggests that some files are missing or modified in the links panel. What this is going to do if I click Yes is this image that I already dropped in there is going to change to the style of the version that I just created. So every time I change the original of something I placed, it's going to change it in the other places I use it, which is a good idea because you keep changing things all the way through your project until you get like the way they look. The changes stay current across all your areas of your project. 